are plenty of reasons to use the latest in consumer product packaging. The Tetra Pak is lighter, in some ways cheaper, and allows for better quality control. But while it's taken off with the orange juice crowd, when will you see a premium wine sold in the new fangled box? Well, tomorrow. Lakeview Cellars will be one of the first Canadian-owned and operated wine producers to offer wine exclusively packaged in Tetra Packaging. Out of the box hits the shelves this weekend. Recently, I caught up with Murray Marshall, the CEO of Diamond Estates Wines and Spirits. Here's our conversation. This is what most of us think of when we think of a wine cellar. It's the, the barrels and the wines in here. It's seeping out, as, as you would describe. Uh, how, do you, how do you take a wine with all of this history and this kind of imagery and brand it in a way that you can package it in something like a Tetra Pak? Well, I mean, the, the whole idea of the barrel aging and stainless steel aging is part of a whole industry and a whole changing technology in the wine industry. There will always be barrel cellars, and the, the premium and the ultra-premium wines will continue to be, you know, aged in barrel and use that as part of the fermentation and the, the finishing process of the wines. The Tetra wines are wines that are going to be delivered into the Tetra pack. Um, traditionally are wines that are meant to be consumed relatively young. They're easy drinking, affordable, easy to approach wines that are designed to go into a convenience pack that has advantages for the consumer and also for the environment. This is part of uh, the, the LCBO's program aimed at reducing waste and obviously it will do that. I mean I was astonished at the figures in terms of the weight of a glass bottle versus the product inside it and the Tetra Pak. From the winemaker's perspective, is there any saving for you? Is there any benefit to you that accrues here in terms of cost or anything like that? Certainly over, over a, a long period of time those savings will occur. The, the actual cost of a glass versus the Tetra Pak uh, unit is, the Tetra Pak is less expensive. There's design and upfront costs in terms of developing those and uh, certainly there's savings that come along the line in terms of shipping these raw materials to the manufacturing facility because you're certainly shipping more units at less expense. So there's some downstream savings that takes place as well. Now quality is obviously uh, one of the things that has to concern you the most in terms of the uh, in terms of husbanding these brands. How do you manage that with something like this kind of a packaging? How do you make sure you're still in control of your product? Well, in this circumstance, um, the first Tetra Pak line to bottle wine was installed in um, a company called Land Pack in Richmond Hill. And they've taken on a capital investment that are going to do this to produce wines for at least four other wine companies, including ours. And we feel you know, honored and uh, to be in the first flight of those brands that were produced in Canada. And certainly they have a, a tremendous quality uh, protocol that they have to go through, quality assurance protocol. So not only are the wines tested and filtered and retested all the way along the line on site at the winery, they're tested pre-shipment to the bottling facility at Landpack, they're tested upon arrival, and then they're tested during the bottling process to make sure that the baseline in terms of the quality positioning that we've established for those wines is maintained all the way through. The ultimate test is once we ship it to the liquor board, they have one of the most sophisticated quality assurance laboratories in the world and are, um, are the final tester of the product. And before the products are released to the consumer, they're uh, tested at the uh, LCBO's laboratory and, uh, and then released to the consumer. Now, this is an industry thousands and thousands of years old. I don't even know how long we've been drinking and packaging wine, but uh, thousands of years. And we know that every innovation is met with great resistance. The uh, artificial cork would be one example. In terms of the acceptance by consumers, now the only study I've, I've seen is done by a, a lobby group for the Glass Manufacturers Packaging Association or something, so it's probably colored, but are consumers ready or is there kind of a romance and a history to the glass bottle that mm. people like? Well, there's certainly a history and a romance to the glass bottle. And for wine aficionados, wine collectors, and for people who are passionate about their wine, they look at, um, at glass as the, as the gold standard. Uh, internationally today, there are alternative packages that are developed that are more consumer friendly and, and are available to a broader range of, of the wine consumer. And these, this category is growing in virtually every sophisticated wine market in the world. Um, the, um, in Ontario currently today, there are bag in the box wines in three, four, eight, sixteen, and twenty liter configurations that are broadly consumed uh, by a broad range of uh, of, of um, users. 
um, in places like Australia, United Kingdom, France, Germany, bag-in-the-box wines or wines in alternative packaging, including PET bottles, are now becoming more and more readily accepted as usage patterns change and lifestyles change. So there's a certain amount of convenience for, uh, for alternative packaging, and today there's a tremendous environmental reason to do it as well. You know, uh, as well as anybody, through your work with VQA, how important uh, branding is and establishing a credential or a trusted brand with, with consumers. Do, can we take it as a seal of uh, almost good housekeeping that somebody associated with VQA is using the Tetra Pak? Does that mean that we'll see VQA rated wines in Tetra Pak sometime? Well, I think you'll see VQA eligible wines in Tetra Pak in the very near future. Right? In fact, on that I can tell you for sure will happen. Scoop. Unfortunately, it takes time for the VQA to engage in, and approve different changes in terms of packaging, all based on the criteria that the VQA um, that lives by. Their mission is to make sure that there is a quality assurance. So Tetra Pak today as a VQA approved package does not exist. Um, the wines will, will need to go through a great amount of research and development relative to the VQA standards, all of which as an association we have uh, in, in embraced and, um, and we use that as a driving force for our brands. And we obviously, you've got some of them here. In terms of how you package them, what you're trying to achieve, was there a lot of, uh, what's the art behind that? What well, there's a couple of things. And I mean, we went to, a, we you know obviously did some research in packaging and we also engaged the LCBO in terms of helping us to look at unique and individual packaging for this. Um, the Liquor Board has a lot of research and uh, if, they, if you make yourself available to, to it, they will help you to try to successfully launch a brand. In the case of Out of the Box, we took a very, um, a very easily approachable wine. We were trying to break down barriers for people to use this and to look at them to use it in different, in, you know, different settings. This really isn't a wine that you'd serve to your boss um, in the dining room at home if you're trying to if you're trying to get a raise yeah. but this might be the type of wine that you'd serve on your deck in your patio take with you on a canoe trip something that you could do where it's uh, meant to be consumed in a light and friendly environment uh, easy tasting easy drinking wines that, that that offer great value we should talk about uh, your overall business because you just made a, an acquisition um, a Halifax based agent mm -hmm. and this means you have a national footprint to, to offer how important is that to you well, it's, it's critical I mean our company has continued to grow uh, since its inception in uh, 2000 and uh, we have recently acquired the, the KDL distributing company Criscott distributing limited in Halifax which services all of Atlantic Canada it allows for us to take the brands that we currently represent and bring them into that Atlantic market and it takes allows us to take the brands that we own and to go into the Atlantic market. This uh, company has been, um, has been historically one of the top performing companies in the Atlantic region. The principal of the company has a tremendous reputation in the industry and we're happy to have him stay with us and help us grow our business in Atlantic Canada. And it'll allow for us to, to, um, to take on additional brands that where a national agent um, or sales and distribution company is is a requirement for their business. So we're very excited and, and uh, it just is, you know, it fills in another piece to our, um, our growth structure. And of course that means that international wines can be branded through you and sold to an audience here. Is there a, an appetite on your part to go the other direction, to look internationally with your brands? Absolutely there is. Um, we've begun now, we're exporting, um, it's particularly ice wine, but we're now exporting our ice wine into 11 different uh, countries around the world. Um, it's, a, it's a flagship brand for us, it's, a, it's something that is internationally renowned and it's an ease to access. Over time we're creating brands, um, not only that we produce here in Canada, but that we produce in offshore marketplaces that will go into the international marketplace. And again it's based on you know, the strength and development of the brands that we can develop and uh, then using our sales and, expertise, sales and distribution expertise delivering them to identified marketplaces. We appreciate your time today. Oh, it's been great. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.